Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to Mad Zohra. Today I'm lecturing you on a Giardia Lamblia. So let's get into the video. Morphology. First I'll tell you about trophozoites and then we'll talk about cysts. Trophozoites are tennis racket or heart shaped. They vary from 10 to 20 micrometers in length and 5 to 15 micrometers in breadth. They are bilaterally symmetrical and two nuclei are present. Four pairs of flagella are responsible for tumbling or falling leaf motion. Sucking disc is circular and situated on ventral surface of the parasite. It helps in its uh, attachment to the ball wall or intestinal wall for the invasion. Cysts of Giardia lamblia are oval shaped, 12 micrometers in length and 8 micrometers in width. Two nuclei are present in immature cyst and four are present in mature cyst, but they remain clustered at one end. Flagella and sucking disc are maybe seen in cytoplasm of the cyst. Life cycle of Giardia lamblia. Trophozoids multiply by binary fission in the duodenum and upper part of duodenum of human beings, but this occurs in favorable conditions passes out into colon under unfavorable conditions and ancestation occurs. Ancestation means that we trophozoites will get converted into cyst forms. During ancestation, a thick resistant wool is secreted and the cell is divided into two within the cyst and cyst passes out in feces and this is the diagnostic thing that we identify. Existation occurs only when cysts are again ingested by man and within 30 minutes of ingestion, two trophozoites hatch out from cysts and start their invasion process. Trophozoites then multiply and form colonies in the duodenum and upper part of duodenum. Habitat and transmission. First I'll talk about the habitat of trophozoites and cysts and then we'll move on to transmission. Trophozoites have a definitive host human being as the Giardia lamblia lives in duodenum and upper part of duodenum and the trophozoites have no intermediate host. Cysts. Uh, these are found in colon of main and in contaminated materials. These materials can be contaminated food or water. Transmission. Occurs by the ingestion of contaminated food and water and the root is a fecal oral root. Next up is pathogenesis of giardiasis. This is a disease caused by Giardia lamblia. Infective agent for this is mature cyst and infective dose is about 100 cysts of Giardia lamblia. Pathogenesis. Large number of trophozoites attached to the ball wall with the help of sucking discs that is present on the ventral surface of Giardia lamblia and cause irritation, low grade inflammation of duodenal or duodenal mucosa associated with Crips hypertrophy, as well as atrophy and epithelial cells damage, leading to acute or chronic diarrhea. Epidemiology. The organism is found worldwide. About 50% of these tool specimens in US United States contain Giardia cysts. Approximately half of those infected are asymptomatic carriers who continue to excrete the cysts for years. Immunoglobin A, IgA deficiency, greatly predisposes to symptomatic infection. In addition to enzymic, giardiasis occurs in outbreaks relative to contaminated water supplies. Hikers who drink untreated stream water are frequently infected. Many species of human as well as mammals act as reservoirs. The incidence of giardiasis is high among children in daycare and among patients in mental hospitals because both of the groups cannot take good care of their hygiene. Clinical findings in giardiasis. Diarrhea which is non-bloody and foul smelling. Stetoria due to male absorption of fats. Male is there is no fever in giardiasis. Weakness, anorexia. Weight loss, abdominal cramps and flatulence. Distension due to gas, nausea and vomiting chronic cholecystopathy when parasite colonizes the bilary tract 
Let me tell you how this happens. As we know that Giardia Lamblia attacks the duodenum and upper part of duodenum. And in the second part of duodenum, the biliary duct opens. So when the parasite enters from duodenum into the biliary tract through this opening of the bile duct, it can cause cholecystopathy. Diagnostic laboratory tests. First, we'll collect specimens like stool, duodenal aspirate, and serum. Then we'll go for microscopy. In formed stools, only cysts are seen in asymptomatic cases. Finding trophozoites or cysts or both in diarrheal stools, duodenal aspirate examination for trophozoites, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA, that detects a Giardia antigen in the stool. Tests for antibody in the serum are not routinely available. If those tests are negative and symptoms persist, the string test is performed. That consists of swallowing and a weight piece of string until it reaches the duodenum, and it may be useful. The trophozoites adhere to the string and can be visualized after a withdrawal of the string. Immunity. Acquired immunity does develop in giardiasis and it is shown by evidence. While immunosuppressed individuals are more liable to massive infection with severe clinical manifestations. Treatment. Tenidazole and matronidazole. These are the drugs of choice for treating giardiasis. Tenidazole is available with the brand name Tenidamax and matronidazole is available with the brand name Flagyl. Other drugs that are useful in the treatment of giardiasis are quinacrine hydrochloride and furazolidone. Prevention and control. Chlorination does not kill the cyst, but filtration removes them. Drinking boiled and filtered or iodine-treated water in endemic areas. No prophylactic drug or vaccine is available. And that's it. Thanks for listening. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a big, big thumbs up. And do consider subscribing. See you soon in another lesson video. Till next time. Allah Hafiz.